Oh, you back? Motherfucker, worry about some cigarettes. We about to hit the road, man. You ready for this tour? It's tour life, nigga. You ready or what? We out of here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We about to go get this truck. Go grab Grammy. Hit the motherfucking road. South Detroit, we here, man. Working hard, party harder. No motherfucking sleeping, no lacking. We on the road, you heard? Game time, we out of here. So, before the release of Southie, in my heart, it's something that I knew how special it was. The people that were part of the creation process with me, as well as some of my inner circle, they all agreed. As, as proud as it makes us to see what it's doing, it's also confirmation of something that we deep down inside knew already anyway. A few months back, we just hit over a million streams. We're probably at one five or past that now, approaching two, and knowing when it's all said and done, we're gonna be at multiple millions, which is dope. But I've never been a numbers guy. Like for me, it's all about the art itself. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't gratifying knowing that something I put my heart and soul into was able to touch so many people. Almost on a daily basis, I have people from all over. I mean, Canada, Brazil, Colombia, Africa, different parts of Europe, and all over in the States that'll reach out. So for this vlog, we're gonna touch on one leg of the Southie tour when we were down in the land of the screw, Houston, Texas and we were doing a press run. Press, 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 press. Cardi don't need more press. And we're just gonna touch on all the escapades and dope shit. Well, not all of them, but a lot that goes on and transpires when we were down there. Peace, baby. It's going down. We here, man. You see the radio station? Let's get right. Let's get right. Tune in, we going live. H-Town. Hot track. Hot track. They're both dope, yeah. That's a hot track. You know, Scarface, he arguably top 10, top 5 all time. Just rap, dope ass interview. Love to the whole age, the whole Texas. You know what I'm saying? Southie tour, Southie out there. The tour life is dope, man. It's dope as shit. First and foremost, you're working, right? But at the same time, it's like a vacation. It's probably the most fun you'll ever have on the job in your life, to be honest. Secondly, it's a bonding experience with your brothers that's on tour with you because there's really no distractions. All the regular day responsibilities that you have back home is put on hold and you're all just focused on the job at hand, partying and having a good fucking time. <laughs> I think you might be right out. Yeah, I am right. Oh, nah. Yeah, because we walked over. <laughs> we lost in here. We lost in here. <laughs> Shit like the jungle. Look at the jungle over here. For this leg of the tour, at least, it was a press run, which is, uh, we weren't focusing on actual shows. We were doing, like, media coverage, radio stations, walkthroughs, press. You know, all things bringing attention to the album and what we got moving forward. Anytime I'm setting up a tour, I talk amongst the whole company, amongst the whole crew, and we start seeing that once I got the dates in, I'm telling everybody, everybody's invited. My producer, Grammy Salazar, he came, my brother Watson, um, my cousin Genesis, and then Cheddar 2020. So it ended up being five of us in total that was on the road. Cheddar that I touched on, 20, he's a mixing engineer as well as a DJ. Now I'm gonna give you a little breakdown on his name. He likes to be referred to as 20, 2020 Guap or Guap which is his stage name, that's his official title. So, love, you know what I'm saying? But back home in New York, nobody fucking calls him that. His name's Cheddar to us. He hates the fucking name Cheddar. For what reason, I don't know. I think he thinks it's a reference to Cheddar Bob from 8 Mile or whatever. Yeah! You wanna fuck with us, huh? Fuck with us, yeah? Cheddar, what the fuck are you doing, man? Where did you get that shit? It's my mom but it's all love. For us, it's Cheddar. So when we down there and people that he's, you know, he rocks with down there is linking up, and I'm like, yo, Cheddar, they looking like, who the fuck is Cheddar? But anyway, that's my brother. Um, he been around forever. But his main position is he runs a studio down there called 2020 Sound Recordings. He's a part of the company and the brand, Mad Gifted and Bother, the major part. Any record that you've heard of mine in the last six years, he's probably mixed and mastered at least about 80% of them. The shit we doing out here, y'all ain't ready for that. Look at my man right here, work. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. oh, chill, not too much, not too much. So then, then we got Watson, right? My brother from the sandbox again. I'm my man Wally Watts with me. What's up, what's up, what's up? So me, Watson, Genesis, who I'll touch on, we all grew up in the same hood. Got an 86 then, you know what I'm saying? We working. The number you dialed is not in service. But anyway, Watson and me grew up in the same hood, Cheddar as well. And so he been around for the whole journey. Watson's position in the crew, everybody got a job, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one team, one dream. That's always been the slogan. That's always been the mantra. Watson's job, he's our cameraman for behind the scenes shit. So he's taking behind the scenes pictures, behind the scenes footage. He's also my drinking partner, you know what I'm saying? He's always down to party. He's the one that's gonna make us party. If I'm, if I'm tapped out from working all day, he's the one that's gonna jumpstart the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck all that. He's also a sleeper, which y'all gonna see too. Now my cousin Genesis, right? Genesis, that's my family, my blood. So his position on the team is he's an artist as well. And he's also one of the couple people that do the graphics for our, our company and our label and team. He's the ball guy, you know what I'm saying? So, for everybody watching the footage, he's the ball guy. It's the general, AKA Genesis, you know what I'm saying? He's working on our joint venture. And last but not least, is my guy, my brother, Grammy Salazar. So, Grammy is my main producer. He's the main in-house producer for Mad Gifted and Bother. He runs the studio here where we're at now, which is an in-house. We like to call this like the Matrix or Fish Burns. Let me, let me get it from um, where I ended off. I'm gonna try to punch it right back in. He wears many hats as well, just like we all do. He also is one of the only guys that touches my mixes and masters certain records as well. He's the calm guy, you know what I'm saying? He's the one who's chill, a little introverted, focused on his thing. He gets in his groove, everything start moving, them juices is flowing. But he's fucking talented as shit. So while we down there, we also we cooked up a whole album out there. So in between doing walkthroughs, shooting a video, and doing radio interviews and all of that, we sat down and worked, obviously, and we created an album from scratch. Grammy was cooking up. He was fucking cooking. He was cooking, chefing up every day, boom, boom, boom. He went on a tear, right? I like to tell people this all the time. A good producer to me is like a great baseball hitter. So the greatest of baseball hitters, they're hitting 300 and up, right? Like 300, that's a great hitter. That means you're hitting three out of every 10. I feel like a great producer is like that. So for every 10 beats a great producer plays, you're gonna like three of them. That means you're a great producer. Sammy went on a tear when we was down there so crazy that the shit was like 15 to 16 beats consecutive. Every single thing he pumped out was like fire, fire, fire. One after another. A lot of them got used for the album we actually created down there, which will, which will be the next release too. It's an album called Everything In Between. Can't disclose too much more after that. It's a lot of shit, you know. We're gonna have a rollout, but um, that's the next album coming out, coming your way from me. Everything in between. But he was on a tear, boy. So while he was working, we like, yo, Sammy, what's up? He's like, headphones off. Yo, what's up, bro? I'm like, yo, what's good? You paying time? I got another one. Boom, headphones back on. Just creating, creating, creating. No talking, no words, no nothing. That's him the whole trip. Unless we on an interview, anytime we in the studio, no con no conversing from Grammy, just working. So we like, yo, this motherfucker's in the Matrix, B. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Look at him, he's in the fucking Matrix. So every time we telling him that, he takes the headphones off, another one. Boom, <laughs> won't even play it for us or nothing. He just ships it over to the other computer. So that's how he got his moniker, right? We started calling him Fishburn. We've been calling them Fishburn. Fish the okay. Matrix. Yeah. It started with yo, he's in the Matrix. That turned into yo, that's Fishburn right there, yo, that's Fishburn. Or two pills. In the Matrix, baby. <laughs> <laughs> <Old> pills. <laughs> the red and the blue pill. The red and the blue. 
This guy's on one right now. The both pills. I love it. Check it out, yeah. AKA both pills. Check it out. He, both like, pills. he just looks over. <laughs> I love it. So when we came back here, he ended up having a new studio, and it just so happened that it turned into fish burns, the matrix. We got right here, which is the control room. You see the green light behind. That's Fishburne's layer, you know what I'm saying? If you go outside, the recording room, it's the red room. It's, the it's two pills, right? The red and the blue pill. That's the red pill. And then outside the lounge area, in the kitchen, that's the blue pill. So that's, that's how that all derived, you know what I'm saying? It all came from the tour down there. So Grammy linking up with 20, BKA Cheddar, was a fucking blessing for them too. Every time we in the V, these dudes is talking engineer talk. Now for us back there, it's like, it's like the equivalent of somebody speaking another language. The fuck is these <laughs> niggas talking about? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> fucking, they don't stop. <coughs> this fucking guy. Check him out. <laughs> Grammy links with him, it's like, <laughs> fucking love at first sight. Every, every chance they get, they talking about whatever fucking equipment they using, the little tricks of the trade, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, all that shit that they kicking, that's what makes the music so beautiful. Because you're only as good as your engineers, man. You're only as good as your production. It's a team effort no matter what. Southie tour, we here, man. Working hard, party harder, no motherfucking sleeping. No motherfucking sleeping. No motherfucking sleeping. All right, man, so Watson, right? My brother Watson. We in the studio heavy, we doing walkthroughs. He's getting footage and pictures of all this shit, right? He's doing his job. But when he's not doing his job, he's fucking snoring on us, dog. We sitting here, every time I turn around, I'm like, yo, you heard that? Yeah, yeah. We hype. Grammy, you can't, you can't work with Grammy because he's in the Matrix. He's not paying attention. I'm Sean Parker. Oh, he's wired in. That's what I'm talking about. Chet is doing whatever he want to do. You know what I'm saying? He's either recording us. That's another thing, too. He slacked off on us. Me and Genesis did a lot of the recording ourselves, right? So we're going to have a lot of engineering credits on the album. Because Cheddar found sneaky-ass ways to sneak out of the studio and go grub or do whatever the fuck he decided to do. So there's, Cheddar's missing half the time. Grammy's in the Matrix. So Watson's our go-to guy, right? It's me and Genesis working. Watson's our go-to guy, we trying to be hype. Yo, look, listen to the shit we doing. We turn around, he's snoring. He's sleeping. We in the car, he's not getting footage, he's sleeping. Every time, bro, it's like, yo fam, he gotta get it together or forget it forever, man. You gotta wake the fuck up. Throughout the whole trip, he slept, man. I give him credit though. He do got credits on the album too. He did some ad-libs, he did some recording himself. He did his thing with the camera. So it's love, but he gotta get the fuck up, man. Oh, <laughs> this is fucking watching me. <laughs> this is fucking cooking me right now. <laughs> yeah. Being on a press run of a tour, right? Obviously, like I said, it's all about media coverage. So the coolest part about that for me is obviously the exposure. That's the that's the goal for it. But just seeing the the love and the embrace that not your hometown gives you, right? Thank you so much, Casket. Thank you yeah, so much, love. crew. I, I am y just happy to have you guys here today. Appreciate you guys have been amazing. Um, I'm excited. Being from New York, you know, somebody say, yo, what's up? Your first response is, what's up? You know, what's up can mean a lot of things in New York. What's up means, what's up, you good? What's up means, the fuck is you looking at? What's up means, you wanna, you wanna rumble? You know what I'm saying? Being from New York, what's up means a lot of things. Out there, they telling you what's up, it's all followed by a genuine handshake, love, you know what I'm saying? A lot of Southern hospitality out there. So I love being down there for that. And the interviews is cool because although a lot of the people that are interviewing you are familiar with you and your music, you're also not from where they're from. You know, we're comparing and contrasting things. We touch on their legends and, my, and how I feel about some of their legends and vice versa. I think Outkast, like, if you're an artist and you haven't been influenced by Outkast, like, yeah. damn. Yeah. Like, I remember being on one of the interviews. At the time, this is before 
the whole fucking Treyway and 6 9 debacle took place before they got locked up and all that. So they was like the, the hottest shit smoking in the streets. Me being from New York, naturally, they wanted to know how I felt about that, how I felt about him calling himself the king of New York. It's fucking Treyway, it's king of New York. How I felt about his music, how I felt about him. Remember, he also had problems with Jay Prince and, and them down there. It's funny too, cause like, love to all the people, but they'll try to bait you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You in the interview, they'll try to bait you into some fucking controversy, controversy and shit like that. So naturally they brought him up. They want to know how I feel, such and such. We touched on that. It's all love, man. Um, the hu H is, is a beautiful place. Like, it's dope down there. I'm always blessed and privileged to get the love that I do. And so when constructing the album, everything in between, it was real dope. And a lot, we got a couple skits on there, and, and if I'm correct, two of them really derived from just being on tour. This is why I'm telling you the importance of the energy and the organic feeling that comes with being on the road with your homies. You'll hear it in the album. You'll hear it in the camaraderie, you know what I'm saying? But we, we had a dope skit that came about of it. So we sitting there eating one day, and 20, he like, you know, he brought us there, obviously. He's the local, so he's like, yo, I know the good. First of all, too, I was dying for barbecue. This is another story. I was dying for barbecue the whole time. I can't come to Texas and not get the barbecue, man. You know what I'm saying? If y'all can smell how it's smelling here, boy, oh my God, booties, baby. Let's get right. These dudes was on some bullshit, fast food shit all day, dog. I don't eat fast food, man. But if it, anytime, you can't even ask a suggestion. Because you ask them, Grammy's picking fast food. You ask Cheddar, he's picking fast food. Watson, fast food. Except Watson was the chef too, that's my guy. Shout out to Watson. You probably gonna see some footage of him chefing it up. Ooh, Chef Boyo Watson, talk to him. That fine swine. Ooh. He did right by his people. Every breakfast, heavy breakfast, heavy bacon, heavy eggs, all that, love. We, had, we gotta eat some authentic Mexican food too, right? You know what I'm saying? So we asking Cheddar, yo, what's the best spot? He bring us to a dope spot, great time. Me, I have a problem, it's like OCD, bro. I can't pick what I wanna eat without asking everybody that I'm with, yo, what you about to get? So I'm making my rounds, so what you getting? What you getting? What you getting? Da -da, everybody answering. We hit Cheddar now. Cheddar hit me with that. Yo, yo, you, I don't know, I'm thinking about getting some pozole. You ever had that pozole, bro? So me, I'm like, in my head, fuck no. But it was just instinctual. To just respond, right? I'm like, Pasole? Yeah, nigga, I had that. I had that Pasole, that Asole, all that, nigga. I eat anything that girl got off of, you know what I'm saying? So, Damn! So we all just start dying. We laughing at the shit, crazy. Anyway, we come back home and start working, and that turns into a skit off the album, you know what I'm saying? It was just so genuine, we was like, we had to redo the shit. So that's what I mean about being on a tour, man. It's something about being there in the moment, and that energy, that, that fire that comes from everybody together. And, and things like that skit, it takes place and it becomes a part of it. It all becomes a story. It's really fueled by just that energy. We all have an emotional attachment to that album because we all were a part of it. 